Hey guys, today I am back to you with an unboxing video of the Spellbinders Paper Arts Glimmer Machine. I have never glimmered in my life, and this month we are going to play. So, I am going to open this brand new baby up, and we will see what's inside. Hopefully you'll be able to see what's inside. I see some foil. Oh, two rolls of foil. Okay. Get the power cord. Our registration and the manual, I'm presuming. Register to receive $5 off. We all can use that. Okay, we have the um, safety precautions. It includes a hot foil stamp press machine. Power cord is six foot. Acrylic spacer pad. Thin shim silicone cooling pad. Magnetic pickup tool. Two glimmer plates. Starter foil rolls, silver and gold. Okay, here it shows all the contents. And then it gives you instructions. Okay. Here is the little pickup tool. This is magnetic. I have been watching a lot of YouTube videos. I have also taken the entire, or watched the entire Spellbinders Boot Camp, which is on the Spellbinders website. And let's see, do I have a die here? Here's a die. So that is handy. The glimmer plate. Or this is the platform. This is the portion that is going to actually run through your platinum machine. And then we have the shims. Oh, there's a die set in here too. A frame and a happy birthday foiling die. It's really pretty. Then you have your shim. There is the cooling mat and your clear shim. And then you have your base that heats up. This is what heats your platform. I like how nice and compact it is. It's not really big and so it'll easily sit on the desk. Um, that's something I like about the um, the Platinum 6 also, because I'm new to the Platinum 6 as well, um, is the, and I'll bring it up here in just a second, but it is also very um, space conscious. Let me see here. Make sure I'm doing this right. There we go. Okay. And then these will go on here like so. We'll have a place to put the the dies afterwards. And that's for that. And then you've got your cord. Power cord, which of course I'll have to hook up. And our foil. So it definitely comes with everything you need to get started. Now, I have already opened my platinum machine. Let me see how this fits on the table here. Let's see. And 
for the platinum. It is nice that it folds up and then this will undock and will run straight through your platinum to give you the pressure um, when foiling. So I am going to run and begin playing with this new toy and learn what I can learn and then I'll be back in a YouTube second. Hey guys, I'm back. I have played a little bit with my glimmer machine and I have been pleasantly surprised with the outcomes. Um, this is a very user-friendly machine. I um, have my actual first three attempts here. They were not perfect. I was learning to use the machine, of course, but I wanted to be upfront and honest with you on how the first pass-throughs went. So I am doing this for the very first time as I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing this. So I am going to share everything I learn as I'm doing it with all of you. So this was my very first attempt. And as you can see, the plate shifted and I got like a double foiled look there and of course, that's not what we're after. So in that situation, it was a case of me putting these plates on top of the foiling before moving the system over here. I found that it was better and I got a better outcome every single time if once the, all the green lights were go, on here to undock this sit it here on my platinum six then put my cardstock down lay the shims on top and roll it slowly through that stopped all my shifting issues um, so this was the only time I had the major shift which caused that double look because the the actual die moved so that was my first attempt. My second attempt here, I got overfoiling. As you can see here, I've got excess here. I've got excess right here in these little crevices. There's excess there. All in these little details here, there's excess. And unfortunately, this does not come with an outside die to cut this out. So if you're going to be using this die, and this is the die that comes with the machine, you're going to be wanting to center this in the center of your paper. And so you're not going to want all that excess foil on there because you can't die cut it out. So, you know, that was another learning experience. Now the paper I have used here is the factor of why this double foiled. And this is a hundred and, wait a minute, it's a hundred pound I believe, um, Hammer Mill Premium Color Copy Cover. And it was recommended by numerous sources to use, and I'll show you the packaging, the Hammer Mill Premium Color Copy Cover with the chameleon on it. This is a super um, smooth cardstock. It's pretty inexpensive and I was recommended to use either the 100 or the 80 pound. So at the time I only had the 100 pound with me. I had not ordered the 80 pound. I thought oh thicker is better so because you know your card bases are better when they're thicker. So I went with the 100 pound when I bought it on Amazon and um, my machine being brand new, just like any die cut machine, the rollers are really strong. So with it being a brand new machine, there was too much pressure with the 100 weight paper. And just like when you're die cutting, more pressure is, is you know, really good when you're die cutting because you want to get all those little bits out. But with foiling, too much pressure gives too much foil. 
Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, when I went to do another, and this is a sneak peek, this is actually on the Spellbinders website under Coming Soon, so you can actually see it, but you can't see much of it here because it underfoiled. But this is an example, a major example, of underfoiling. And in this example, this was my third attempt, I used the same 100 pound, but I took out the thin shim and just used the thicker shim that the glimmer plates have. They have two shims, a clear and a green. So on this one, I thought, well, I'm going to make my sandwich thinner and see what happens. And as you see, I got underfoiling. And of course, you know, that's not what we're after either. So, from there, I played around with it a little bit more, and I realized with that paper, the 100 weight paper, the only way I was going to get a good impression was with the thicker shim and two cardstock shims. And with that combination, going through the Platinum 6 was the right sandwich for my machine. And it gave me this result. Uh, let me see. I've got it perfectly. So that's how I was able to create the right example. Now this one, I believe, had a tiny bit of overfoiling right around the edges. And I was able to use a dry erase marker, or not a dry erase marker, a sand eraser. You can use a mono sand eraser to remove little specks if you have little specks around the edges. So I was able to do that, and that solved that issue. Now, I have ordered in, since then, the 80-pound cardstock, the hammer mill, 80-pound, and it foils like a dream. So I would recommend starting with the 80 pound and as your machine lightens up and loosens up, um, if, you, if you're working with a newer machine, use the 80 pound is what I would start with. And if you're using an older machine, if you're using a big shot or something older, I would probably start with the 100. And, it's either 100 or 110 pound, whichever one it comes in. Um, but use that hammer mill that's the thicker. So it, this is trial and error. And it didn't take me many tries to figure it out. It's, you know, it's just a few runs through and you get to feel what your machine is going to need. Um, now, I did some... Um, see, here's a butterfly that I did. And then I took the waist foil and did a reverse foiling um, of the butterfly with the waist. So you don't want to throw your waist away. Um, this is what a waist foil looks like right here. So like this butterfly has been foiled and you don't want to throw this away. If you have a solid plate and Spellbinders sells smaller, um, let me grab one. They have different shapes like this that you can use for reverse foiling. Um, but for like full reverse foiling, Pink Fresh Studios has an extra large plate. For reverse foiling and I will show this more in depth in future videos but I just wanted to let you know that's available and it's out there and it's more for the whole card front when you start using larger um, dies or foil plates so um, I just wanted to make let you know you know that 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 is what reverse foiling looks like you foil first and then you end up using the scrap to make your reverse so that was pretty cool to learn so why don't we I actually need to 
foil something for a card coming up. So why don't we go ahead and do that? And I can show you. Uh, whoops, this went up, got turned off. Um, we'll have to let that heat back up again. But I will show you um, a card foiled for you real quick. And coming up with the new release here on the 10th, I will be um, sharing the new Hexy Gems collection with all of you. That's the one that's going to have the Spellbinders um, virtual class with it. I have made a handful of cards with that um, collection, and most of it is foiling. There is a stitching die also, a die set also, which is beautiful. And it's going to be coming out. Um, so I will be having those videos come out soon. Um, and there are some other larger um, foiling sentiments that are going to be coming out as well. So once you turn your glimmer machine on, you'll have the power button. Then once this is heated, you'll have... A platform ready green light and then you can put your plate down and then you hit this timer button and once the timer button is solid then the plate is ready to go through the platinum so let me get our foil and we will cut our foil and I am using I found that a lot of my paper scissors were not good for cutting foil so I have a designated, I'm going to do it this way, a designated pair of scissors for cutting my foil. And um, that has worked out a lot better for me. Okay, so the green light now is solid. So that tells us that the plate is ready for transfer. And I have cut this piece, and now I'm going to cut it down so I don't use all of this foil here. So you just want to cut your foil to approximately the size of your outline there. And then I'm going to undock this, and be really careful not to bend it when you're undocking it. Move it over to your platform. Add your foil shiny side to the foil plate. And remember, this surface is hot. I'm going to put my cardstock down. And then both shims. And then I'll put my fingers on top to help it not shift. And then roll slowly through. As you roll, it gives the pressure, and the, between the heat and the pressure, it pushes the foil into the paper. And then let's see how it worked. I have never used this um, foil plate before, so this is a first. Let's go ahead and get the platform and relock her so she stays warm. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the machine. It looks like it foiled. So I'm letting it cool off just a little bit. Let's see how she did. Pretty good. It's not completely straight, but I'm going to cut this down just a little bit. So it should work for my project. I did cut this piece to four and a quarter by five and a half so that I can cut it down and still border it with other cardstock. So there's absolutely no extra foiling on that and no underfoiling. So it actually did a perfect foil. So I'm really, really pleased with that. So now if you want to take this piece and do the reverse foil, you would take this piece 
and oh heck I'll just do it real quick let me see where we're at we're at 14 minutes let's just do it real quick let's heat this baby up I'm feeling confident so we will go for it why not we will put her on there now this whole plate's going to get hot and remember the shiny side of the foil always kisses the foil plate. Shiny side to the foil. I mean to the to, to the metal. Shiny to the metal. So metal to metal. Okay? So this is the side. This gray side is the adhesive. So this is the side that's going to stick to your paper. And this is the side that is going to look pretty on your paper. So that is how you remember, and let's see, let's get a piece of paper. I know I cut more pieces. What did I do with them? There we go. And when you're using a large foil plate like this, it's really good to give it a little bit extra time. Now where we just got the solid. Give it a little extra time because this is a lot of surface to heat up. And I can feel it. It's warm. You do want to be careful. But um, just give it a few extra seconds there. And, you know, then work carefully. I mean, quickly. Because you don't want it to cool down too much. So let's move it over here. Foil to metal to metal. Paper down. Shims down, hold it down, and roll slow. Oh, 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 I forgot. Two extra shims. This plate's got to come off. So I might not get a good covering here because I need to put my shims on it. It may have moved there on me. The Pink Fresh Studio plate is thicker. Than the spellbinders plates so i have had to resort to the shims on this one so i may not get a pretty pretty outcome here we'll see and if i don't you know this is all trial and error it's a learning a learning curve and what i've learned also here let me get this plug back in because what i've learned also is with this double or with this reverse foiling you can run it through a second time so let me let it cool a little bit I had totally forgotten this is just thicker so I can't it won't my machine won't take both oh it actually might have worked okay so now when this comes off it's going to come off as a complete, if, if we're lucky, it's going to come off as a completely, okay, it might have underfoiled a little bit. Yeah, it underfoiled. Okay, so let me try it one more time. Because it's underfoiled. So I'm going to leave that paper on there. In this platform, let it get heated back up again. Hot. We are hot, baby. Hook Put it right here, pretty side down, plate down. Remember, I'm just doing the one because of the thickness of that plate. And I'm going to go really slow, let it have all that heat. Let's see if we can save this. See these little little tiny tricks you just gotta try them and see if they work um, that's that's the beauty of this is every machine is a little bit different oops and you just just play I got a little foil on my plate just um, play with it and anytime anytime you guys are playing and you're struggling I never mind questions
You can always email me at melaniestamps at yahoo um, or message me below. I would love for you to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel and follow my journey. All right. Still a little underfoiled, which is probably the pressure issue. For reverse foiling, I probably should use the 110 weight, and this is a learning is a learning curve here, but it's still very usable. This is the underfoiling, right? Let's see if you can see it. These little specks. It's not a big deal. I can trim that down, and it'll be still very usable and very pretty. And you can see the underfoil on here. I don't know if you can see in the picture. Uh, I don't know if you, I don't I don't know if you can see those little specks on the the film or not. But it's very very little. It's very minor. Um, so this is definitely trimmable and usable. So yeah, so that is my first play at the foil machine, and there are more to come. So I hope this has helped you get started with your foiling journey. And like I said, if you have any questions, comment below. If you've been foiling for a long time, let me know how I'm doing. Did I do good for my first time? If you haven't been foiling, do you have the foiling machine that's still in the box? Let me know because I want to encourage you to get it out. If you want to get into foiling and you haven't purchased your foil machine yet, if you want to do this with me, I would love to hear about that too. I will leave a link down below where you can get your foil machine, but either way, no matter where you're at in your journey, I would love, love to craft with you. So until next time, watch for those videos popping up next week. Ring that bell. I will talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.